Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio. I'm a lecturer at Cornell University, and I am joined today by my coworkers Anna, Elsa, and Mr. Moose. And in this video, we will discuss how to prevent or stop Zoom bombing, which is an unfortunate side effect of everyone teaching online on short notice, where we have some bad actors or people who have to ruin it for everybody else joining classes they aren't supposed to be in and sharing inappropriate content or acting as trolls and generally messing things up. Now, the number one preventative measure you can take is to simply avoid sharing the join link for your meeting publicly. For example, if you're a teacher and you're using a learning management system like Canvas or Google Classroom, you want to make sure that link is only available to students who are logged in as opposed to publicly on the web somewhere or on social media. There are also a lot of default settings you can adjust to make your meeting safer, even for students who are supposed to be in your class, for example, I can go into settings and change my default such that only the host can share the screen and then all meetings I create going forward, that'll be the default. You'll see some of these settings are locked by admin, so depending on your organization's settings, you might have to talk to an IT person or an administrator to get those changed. But for purposes of this video, let's assume those preventative measures have failed. So you have a student who has shared the join link on social media. Even if you created a password, maybe you have a student who's shared the password and somebody has gotten into your meeting and is disrupting things or sharing content you don't want other people to see. So let's talk about how you can stop that and shut it down from within the meeting controls. So we're not necessarily going to talk about these in any particular order. It kind of depends on what people are doing to disrupt your meeting. But one of the most common ones seems to be screen sharing. So again, let's assume you didn't have it set to host only as the default. You can access that in the meeting by going down to the bottom toolbar, clicking the up arrow next to share screen, click on advanced sharing options, and then make sure this is set to one participant at a time and only host. So if you had this set to multiple participants or one participant at a time, but everybody can share and everybody can start even if somebody else is sharing, then that would allow somebody to just start sharing unilaterally or unprompted or override somebody else's screen share. So if you have that set to host only, then that should prevent other people who are in the meeting from sharing inappropriate content using the screen share feature. Next, let's talk about the participants window, which I already have it open here, but if you don't have that open, you have a manage participants button at the bottom. So you can click that to open and close a list of participants in the meeting. And you have a bunch of controls here as the host that help you manage things. One useful one, even if there's are no real bad actors or Zoom bombing, but people are just forgetting to mute themselves and you're getting background noise or dogs barking, is the mute all button. And again, then you get a checkbox that says allow participants to unmute themselves. So if you uncheck that, you can forcibly mute everyone and then they can't unmute themselves. So if you do have a disruptive person who's yelling or saying inappropriate things, you can just kind of use that as a stopgap to mute everyone until you can identify that person and remove them from the meeting, which we'll talk about in a bit. Another useful option here, kind of your panic button, if you notice that a lot of people are joining the meeting who shouldn't be, indicating that maybe the link got posted publicly somewhere, is to go down here to more and then click lock meeting. You will get a pop-up prompt confirming that you want to lock the meeting, and this will prevent any new attendees from joining. So this can give you some breathing room to kind of collect yourself and identify and remove individuals who weren't supposed to get into the meeting. You can do that by hovering over their names, clicking on more, and then clicking on remove. That will give you a pop-up prompt asking if you want to remove them and warning you that they won't be able to rejoin, which in this case is what you want. I believe that is a default setting that you can change, which does allow people who get removed to rejoin, but you probably don't want to do that. So I'm going to hit cancel for now because I don't want to kick Mr. Moose out of the meeting, but that's how you would do that. And then if you do get to a point where you want to unlock the meeting, for example, you have some students who haven't actually gotten in yet, you can go back down to more and hit unlock. Another option we haven't talked about yet is the chat. So you can access this by clicking the chat button in the bottom toolbar that will open the chat window on the right. And the default is typically that everybody can talk to everybody. So even if you have somebody who isn't sharing inappropriate video or audio content, maybe they're just being a jerk in the chat, there's kind of this hidden little three dot menu on the lower right over here. If you click on that, you can change who the participants can talk to. So you can make it so they can only talk to you or they can't talk to anyone. So again, maybe not necessarily in a Zoom bombing scenario, but if you don't want students effectively passing notes to each other and using individual private chat, you can change it so all chats are public or they can only talk to you or they can't talk to anyone. 
Finally, as the host, you also have the ability to turn off individual participants' video. There are a couple different ways to do that. You can right-click on their thumbnail and then select Stop Video. You can also do that through the participants window. If you mouse over their name, click on More, you have a Stop Video option there. So again, if you have somebody who is showing inappropriate content with their camera as opposed to the screen share feature, you have two different ways to stop that. And then they will not be able to resume their video unless you request it specifically. So if I right click on them again, I can click Ask to Start Video. That won't do it automatically. They will then get a prompt asking them to restart their video. And I lied, there's one more feature I forgot. If you go to share your screen, there is an annotation feature. So for example, I'm gonna share just kind of a dummy PowerPoint file here. And I have an annotate option that lets me doodle on the screen here. And by default, this is also available to participants. So this could be great for collaborative editing or if you're using the whiteboard feature and it's just like you wanna have multiple people collaboratively drawing on a whiteboard. But again, you could have somebody doodling or drawing graffiti or doing something inappropriate that you want to stop there. So go up here to these three dots and go down to disable participant annotation. And you could also, if you want participants to be allowed to annotate but be responsible for what they draw, you could show their names so you know who is drawing what. So you have a couple different options there to fine tune the controls of annotation if people aren't cooperating with that. So I hope that was helpful. Again, a reminder that the number one step here is prevention. You want to try to avoid sharing your Zoom join link publicly, and you want to take a careful look at your default settings to potentially lock down some of the things that would prevent a bad actor from sharing inappropriate content in your call. But worst case scenario, if someone does get through and is misbehaving, there are multiple different ways you can shut that down within the meeting. So again, hope you found that useful. If you have a question, please ask in the comments and I will try to get back to you. Thanks.